Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the trigeminal nerve section of the course pack. This resource is brought to you by Scrubs, which is the Student Collaborative Resources for Understanding and Brody Success. My name is Bryce Pugh and I'm in the class of 2027. First we'll begin with the Scrubs mission statement, which is that Scrubs is a student-driven initiative that aims to help uh, develop supplemental resources for current and future cohorts that will pass through Brody. Members of Scrubs participate in a variety of subcommittees working to create resources for students by students. These resources aim to offer unique perspective from students that have walked in the same shoes, developing resources that we wish we had been exposed to during our time in the course. The hope is this organization will become a staple of the Brody student body, exemplifying the unique collaborative community that Brody offers. If this is a mission that aligns with your goals and you have the desire to help those that will come behind you, as well as a goal to leave your mark on Brody as a whole, we invite you to join the team. And as always, a quick disclaimer, the resources that are included in this document are made by students and not the faculty. As such, there's a possibility for errors in our development, and although this is mitigated via a team approach to development with multiple stages of vetting, if there's a contradiction with the coursework presented within your course, please go by the course documents. Additionally, Scrubs aims to supply supplemental resources, however, these are in no way a replacement to the instruction of the Brody faculty. Use these resources as a supplement, but not as your primary source for course material. So first, let's look at a quick overview of the trigeminal nerve. And so the trigeminal nerve, we can see right here, is going to be a really fat one coming off the brain. And that's a, a good way to identify it, is it's going to be really big. And it's pretty early on going to split into three branches. And so right here, we're going to have the trigeminal ganglion. And then we're going to give off three branches that are going to have different functions and branches. And so we're going to label those as V, as cranial nerve 5, V1, V2, V3. And um, they're going to kind of be named based on the region that they're going to go to. And so V1 is ophthalmic, V2 is maxillary, and V3 is mandibular. And so what this picture here is showing is the sensory aspect of the trigeminal nerve. And so um, if you remember back to the dermatome picture, we saw the dermatomes cover the whole body except for right here on the face. And so that region of the face is going to be covered by... Uh, cranial nerve V1, V2, and V3. And so our main function here, we're going to have sensory innervation to the face. V3, so V1 and 2 only do that. V3 does that as well, but in addition to that, V3 is going to give motor innervation to our muscles of mastication, and mastication is chewing. And so we're going to have four muscles of mastication. That's going to be our temporalis muscle, our masseter, and then our medial and lateral pterygoid, which we'll look at in a second. And then I also want to point out there are going to be three structural ganglia. They're going to be structurally attached to the trigeminal nerve or its branches, but it will not have any functional innervation from these. The functional innervation is going to come from a different branch. And so on V1, we'll structurally have the ciliary ganglia, ganglion, but functionally that's going to be from cranial nerve 3. On V2, we're going to have the pterygopalatine ganglion, which we saw in the previous video, which is functionally cranial nerve 7. And then on V3, we have the submandibular, which we also saw in the previous video, which is cranial nerve 7. And so looking at the trigeminal nerve, we're going to have three branches. So we already pointed that out. We're going to come off the brain right here, and we're going to split into three branches, which are all going to go off into the middle cranial fossa. And so in the middle cranial fossa, right here, which is kind of hard to see in this picture, we're going to have our superior orbital fissure, which is going to go towards the orbit, or the eye. And that's going to be V1. So ophthalmic, meaning eye, that's going to go through the superior orbital fissure. Just below that, we're going to have two more. We're going to have or two uh, foramen, foramina. We're going to have the foramen rotundum, which is going to be round. And that's what the name means, rotundum, round, foramen rotundum. That's going to give V2. And then running through V3, or sorry, running through the third one is going to be V3, and this is the foramen ovale. So this is shaped like an oval, foramen ovale. And so we have V1, 2, 3. Also here, I'll just point out while we're here, we're going to have the foramen spinosum, which is going to be right next to the foramen ovale. And so here's uh, the quick visual that I've drawn for this. And again, I want to point out that these quick drawings of the nerves I think are very helpful because, um, again, this unit has a ton of nerves, a ton of branches, a ton of innervation, and so it can be a really helpful way to organize all of this. And so we'll go through all of these branches and what they mean. But just to give you a quick look, we have our trigeminal ganglion, 
and we're going to give v1, which will be up here in all its branches, v2, which will be right here, and then v3, which is going to be down here. Here's an example of a test day visual that you could do. So if you're in the middle of an exam, you can just draw this really quick just to get an idea of, oh yeah, right here we have two branches going this way, we have this one, and you can kind of get a better idea of what those are. Okay, let's start by looking at cranial nerve V1, which is going to be our ophthalmic nerve. And so, as I said, this is going to be entirely sensory, so all GSA, and it's going to be eventually ending up at this purple region. And so we're going to start as our trigeminal ganglion right after we come off the brain. And pretty early on, we're going to give off a meningeal branch, this recurrent meningeal branch, which is going to go to supply dura. We're going to continue on, and then we're going to split into three branches, which are going to be our nasociliary, frontal, and lacrimal. And uh, at this point, we're going to pass through the superior orbital fissure, which is what we looked at on the previous slide. And a good way to remember this is going to be NFL, and that's from medial to lateral. And so this is going to be really important to look at these in the orbit, whether that's dissected by you or prosected. You want to look at um, these branches and remember medial to lateral. So L, L, lateral is lacrimal, and then you can work your way back. So our lacrimal branch is just going to continue without any splitting. Our frontal branch is going to go and split into the supratrochlear and supraorbital. So the two supras are frontal. Our nasociliary branch is going to split into four. And so that one's going to have a lot of branches in the lab. And so we're going to have infratrochlear. So we had supra, we now have infratrochlear. Posterior and anterior ethmoid, ethmoidal. And then we have our long ciliary. And so that's four, two, one. And I also want to point out that um, you can see right here, just above the orbit, we're going to have these little holes. That's the supraorbital foramen. And so our supraorbital nerve of the frontal, the supraorbital one, is going to exit the skull via these holes right here, the supraorbital foramina, and come out onto the face. And you can see that here. They're coming out and going up here. And again, I want to say that this purple region is going to be the, the innervation of V1. The light blue is going to be V2, and the red is going to be V3. So if you get a question that's asking about somewhere in this region or this region or this region, be sure you can identify that. Like the upper lip, that's going to be V2. Lower lip, V3. So now let's move on to uh, V2, which is the maxillary nerve. This one, again, is entirely GSA, entirely sensory. And so coming off the trigeminal ganglion, we're going to go, and again, pretty early on, we're going to give off another another branch to the dura, and this is our middle meningeal branch. We're then going to continue on, and we're going to enter the pterygopalatine fossa via the foramen rotundum. So this was the one that we looked at uh, in the middle cranial fossa. We're going to travel through the round hole, the foramen rotundum, and enter here. In the pterygopalatine fossa, we're going to give off one branch, or sorry, we're going to give off five branches. I drew it as one but uh, I kind of group them together. So we're going to have five branches, which is the nasopalatine, our greater or lesser palatine, our posterior, superior, lateral nasal, and our pharyngeal. And so we're going to revisit a lot of this stuff later on in the course when you get to the, the pterygopalatine fossa. That's a really heavy topic, and um, you'll be able to identify where these branches are going. And you can kind of tell based on the name, these are going to go to the palate, um, these are going to be nasal palate area, that's again nasal area, pharynx area, and so you can kind of get from the names where these are going to go to. And let's continue on. We're going to pass through the infraorbital fissure, the inferior orbital fissure, and so we're maxillary nerve up until this point. Once we pass through that, we're now the infraorbital nerve. So this is infraorbital. As the infraorbital nerve, then we're going to give off a zygomatic branch, and our dental plexus. And so the dental plexus, the official name, is going to be our superior alveolar nerves, and we have a posterior, middle, and anterior. And so it's called the dental plexus because it's going to come down and go um, to our teeth right here. And so after we give off our three loops for our dental plexus, then we're going to exit onto the face via the infraorbital foramen. So Infraorbital, we must be below the eye. And so we have our orbit. Right below that, you can see these foramina right here. And that's going to be our infraorbital foramina. 
And so we're going to exit right there and come onto the face to give this innervation. And before we move on to V3, I want to point out um, our muscles of mastication individually real quick. Um, we'll look at these a little more later on, but I just want to give you an idea of what they are. So we have our temporalis muscle. And again, these are all working towards chewing or mastication. So we have our temporalis muscle, which is kind of over your temporal bone or temporal region. And it's going to extend down to here. We also have our masseter muscle right here, which is this one. And so if we remove that, we remove the ramus of our mandible, this region right here, then we're going to see two more muscles. And that's going to be our medial pterygoid, which is running vertically, and our lateral pterygoid, which is running horizontally. So these four muscles make up our muscles of mastication. And now let's look at V3, which is our mandibular nerve. And so V3 has the same GSA components. We're going to go to this mandibular region of the face all the way up to here. But what makes it unique is that we have branchiomotor innervation as well. So we have motor innervation, branchiomotor that's from our pharyngeal arches. Make sure you're looking at that. It's really important. And so we're going to pass through or exit the trigeminal ganglion, and we're going to leave the skull via the foramen ovale. That's our oval foramen. And we're going to go down, and we're going to give off a couple early branches. First, we're going to give off this spinous branch, which is going to come re-enter the cranial cavity through our foramen spinosum. And so we looked at, in the middle cranial fossa, we had our foramen ovale. Right next to it was a small one that was the foramen spinosum. And so this recurrent spinous branch is going to go up back through there. We're also going to give off another branch, which is our uh, nerve to the medial pterygoid. And as you can imagine, that's going to go to our medial pterygoid, one of our muscles of mastication. And so those are in blue right here, so I kind of group that over with that. This is also going to give off minor branches that are going to go to two little uh, muscles, which are tensor villi palatini and our tensor tympani. And so we talked about the tensor tympani in the previous video with uh, some of the tympanic membrane. It had that protective function. And our tensor villi palatini we'll look at a little bit in a later video. But you can just remember that tensor, if it has tensor in its name, then it's going to be from V3, from this branch. And so continuing down, once we get to this point, we're going to split into an anterior division and a posterior division. So our anterior division is going to be these right here. Our posterior division is going to be these three. And so uh, first, let's look at the posterior division, actually. So the posterior division, we're going to have our auriculotemporal nerve, which is actually going to be formed because it's going to circle around our middle meningeal artery which we'll uh, look at what that is when we get to the vasculature section. But it's going to encircle that, and then it's going to continue to go to the parotid gland. And along the way, not drawn here, it's going to have the otic ganglion, which is going to be right here. And so we talked about the otic ganglion earlier that's structurally associated with this, but not functionally. And so that's going to the parotid gland. And remember, we looked at facial nerve, goes all the glands except the parotid gland. This is what's going to the parotid gland. And so the middle meningeal artery, I also want to point out, it's going to continue up and run through the foramen spinosum with the spinous nerve right here. And so now let's continue on down with the rest of our posterior division branches. Um, I also want to group these. These are going to be mainly sensory, so all except one. Our anterior are going to be mainly branchiomotor except one. So our posterior division, that was sensory. We now have our lingual branch, which is going to be right here. And we looked at that in the previous video as well, the previous section. It's going to go to the tongue, as you can imagine, lingual to the tongue. And it's going to go to the anterior two-thirds. And it's going to have general sensation. So GSA, like this whole thing is GSA, so it's going to carry GSA, of course. And like we looked at earlier, it's going to get joined by the chord of tympani, which is going to bring that uh, taste sensation to the anterior two-thirds. Also here, we're going to have our inferior alveolar branch, which is going to come down here. It's going to give off a little branch. So that's what's pictured here, too. It's going to give off this little branch that's going to be the nerve to the mylohyoid and the anterior belly of the digastric. And so I want to point out that these are the two muscles of the submental triangle, which won't really make sense right now. It'll make sense a lot more later. But if you keep in mind that these two are grouped together as the ones being right here and 
uh, just below your jaw in this triangle, then the other ones that are in the facial nerve, that's that little branch, are going to be a little more over here together. And so I just want to put that in your mind. But um, So the main branch gives off that little one, and it's going to continue through this foramen right here, which is our mandibular foramen, which is going to allow it to enter the jaw, and it's going to come down and give off innervation to a lot of the teeth, which is going to be this inferior dental plexus. And so it's eventually going to continue, and it's going to exit the skull via this foramen right here, and that's going to be our mental foramen. And so this is going to be our mental nerve exiting the mental foramen. So at, at that point, it becomes the mental nerve. And that's also why uh, this region is kind of the mental region, and that's why you're going to see in the triangles of the neck an organization that just below the jaw we have our submental region. And now let's go to our anterior division. So our anterior division is going to be primarily branchiomotor, but it's going to have one exception, which is sensory. And so we're going to come down here. We're going to give off this branch that's going to go to our three muscles of mastication. So we already did the medial pterygoid, so the rest have to be lateral pterygoid, masseter, and temporalis muscles. Also in this anterior division, we're going to have our buccal nerve, which um, is sensory only. And so... Uh, don't get confused and think that this is giving motor innervation to the buccinator muscle. We looked at that. That was the facial nerve that's doing that. And so these are only giving innervation to muscles of mastication. And the buccinator is not a muscle, muscle of mastication. Remember, it helps keep food or a bolus between your teeth when chewing, but it does not actually help with chewing. And so this is only sensory, and that's going to go to, like, your cheeks and around the, the buccal region. Okay, and to end the video, let's look at some clinical anatomy. And so there's not a ton in this section as of right now. We'll look at it a little more later on when we're looking at uh, the infratemporal fossa, anteriopalatine fossa, and stuff like that. But um, for now, we want to keep in mind a couple things. One is that if we want to achieve local anesthesia of the face, then we're going to use the infraorbital foramen. And so that's going to be uh, right here, the one infraorbital just below the eye. That one's a really common one to use to get local anesthesia of the face. I also want to point out that if we want to get a nerve block of the inferior alveolar nerves, and so that's these ones, so if we want to get a nerve block to do something with the teeth, then we're going to want to do that right here on our inferior alveolar nerve. But it can be difficult because the mandible has this lingula here, which uh, just means tongue, lingula is tongue, so this little tongue here that kind of can make it difficult to get, so that's something you want to be aware of. And I also want to point out that uh, an aneurysm of our internal carotid artery can involve cranial nerve 5, so if it's if an aneurysm forms, it can kind of push up against the nerve and cause uh, deficits and stuff like that. And then finally, trigeminal neuralgia, also known as tic du la rue, is a, a clinical presentation where people will have terrible pain along some sort of branch of cranial nerve 5 that can be 1, 2, or 3, at least one of them, and it has an unknown cause, so we don't know why it happens. But um, people have noticed that it's usually associated with an adjacent vessel that's just kind of like lying next to the trigeminal ganglion.